Welcome to another edition of Locked On Syracuse. I'm Matt Bonaparte. Usually, I have Brad Klein with me today. He is not here, but don't worry. It is not a solo episode. We have a pretty special guest with us today who will be revealed in due time. But the hint is we will be talking Carlos Del Rio Wilson. It's all on Locked On Syracuse, and it's right now. Our Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Now for our special guest drum roll, please. Connor Foster, the coach of Cartersville High School football. Connor, thanks so much for being here today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, pleasure to be here. Appreciate you having me. If you don't know Connor, he obviously uh, the coach of Cartersville High School football, where Carlos Del Rio William or Wilson, excuse me, uh, went to high school. Uh, and obviously, Carlos is the talk of the town in the Salt City right now. A transfer from Florida, and of course, a quarterback, highly rated. Some pretty big news for Orange fans. I know in Georgia, you know, college football is on a bigger stage than it is in Syracuse, but uh, this is pretty big deal for Syracuse right now. Yeah, and it should be. Uh, Carlos is a big time player. I think you guys got a a great player and a great young man. Um, you know, somebody that's really going to have a great opportunity to lead your program forward. Yeah. So the first thing I wanted to ask you, because we're in this kind of uh, stage with Carlos Del Rio Wilson, where nobody really knows anything about him, uh, and that's why I'm trying to get people like you to talk about him. Um, so can you describe the man and say three to five words? What are the big characteristics that come to your mind when you think Carlos? Yeah, the first thing is a uh, competitor, tremendous competitor. Um, that's that's one thing that he and I were able to see eye to eye on really quickly. Um, you know, and, and then, um, you know, I think he's he's got a servant heart. You know, he wanted to come in and serve our team in any capacity, uh, whatever was needed to win football games, whether it be playing quarterback or, um, you know, working in a different role. Um, I just really appreciated those two things in particular about him that, again, great, great competitor, great competitive fire. Um, and then also being willing to serve his teammates, serve his coaches, and being willing to, to come in and, and also have great humility. I guess that would be word number three. Um, and, again, you couldn't ask for better traits from a quarterback. Uh, those three are where you'd like to start and build your foundation from. And Carlos has been talked about not only as a, a fantastic player, but we heard from Mike McAllister, a Syracuse football insider, not too long ago, that this is a guy that wants to serve his community. What can you tell us about Carlos off of the field as well? Yeah, again, um, this, the same attributes to make him a great football player uh, are the things that, that I really get, uh, enjoyed getting to know about him off the field. Uh, you know, he wants to to use football as as a tool to you know not only to improve his life and his family's life, but those around him, uh, the communities where, where uh, he's fortunate enough to play. Uh, again, just, just very aware of the platform that he has and the opportunities that he has with being uh, the quarterback of a program and, and having quite a, quite a voice and a big personality. Yeah, and Carlos, obviously, uh, like I said, a four-star prospect coming out of high school, goes to a pretty big program in Florida and decides after a season of, of, of a redshirt season that he wants to be elsewhere. Do you think that Carlos knows how cold it is in Syracuse, Connor? I mean, it's not its not Georgia. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, well, uh, I, I think that's insignificant to him. Uh, he just He wants to go play. He wants to go compete. But no, no, um, I, I don't think you can appreciate it until you, until you're <laughs> in it. Um, I got a brother that lives in Boston. I know it's not quite the same, but it's Close it's enough. a whole whole different kind of cold. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that'll be a little bit of a transition. But you guys got you got the indoor, the dome, uh, yep. so he he ought to be good to go. So onto the football field now for for Carlos Del Rio Wilson. Uh, compared to Garrett Schrader, who's was Syracuse's incumbent quarterback coming into this season. We all know that he's already going to have a better throwing arm. That's kind of the thing that we've heard about him. Is he a dual threat? Sure, probably not as good of a runner as Garrett is because that is Garrett's main game, but he's going to have that arm. 
What would you say are his biggest strengths on the football field other than his cannon? Yeah, you you know, you said it. You start there with a the big arm, um, you know, great, great competitiveness. And, you know, the thing about him is that he's, he's got a, a quite a physical presence. He's able to hang in the pocket and, um, you know, endure some some traffic there in the pocket that, that most quarterbacks, uh, they get a little skittish or maybe a little nervous. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a big, thick kid. He can handle himself. He's, he's really, you know, I'm not going to say he's got elite speed or anything, but he's got great mobility within the pocket, which is which is what you want. You know, that's sustainable throughout the season. He's able to keep plays alive and, and does a really, really good job. I think that's the difference you'll see. He's able to keep his eyes down the field. You know, when he – when he starts to move around within the pocket or even outside of the pocket, he's looking to make plays down the field. Gotcha. Um, so obviously there is a little bit of a quarterback battle brewing uh, within Syracuse's camp right now. Are you confident in him and in his ability that he'd be able to go out right now and lead a team like Syracuse to success in, in the power five at, at a, at a, as a freshman? Well, I mean, I haven't, you know, I haven't thrown with him in a year. Uh, I would assume that he's he's made some some strides there, but I know Carlos has great work ethic, so I don't I don't think that'll be an issue. And you know I think Carlos understands at every level, um, you know the the accuracy becomes more and more important. The windows get smaller. The the ability for the defense to react and to close in, um, you know, in those windows, I, I think so. That'll be key for him. You know, the ability to not just to have the live live arm, but to be accurate. Um, you know, and, and to be able to to process things quickly as he sees different defenses, different fronts, and to be able to get the offensive line in the right protection. Um, you know, not not just uh, to be able to make a play down the field, but to get the offense in a good play. That you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve there, but he did a tremendous job with us picking it up quickly. But again, it's it's different at every level. But from a talent standpoint, from a character standpoint, I think in due time, um, you know, I think it'll be it'll be a no doubt. And like you said, you haven't thrown with him in a year, uh, so things might be a little different than they are now than they were then. Were you surprised that he left Florida? Uh, I, I don't. I don't necessarily think that. Um, you know, I, I don't. I don't think that was really what he wanted to do in his heart. Um, you know, at the time, and uh, he wanted to stay and wanted to compete. And um, you know, he's not the kind of person to shy away from that. He had to compete here at Cartersville, and. Um, you know, I, I don't think that that's a reflection on uh, being unwilling or being being scared of of um, competition. Obviously, he's, he chose Syracuse, that already has a pretty good quarterback room. Uh, so I don't I don't think there's any fear of competition. I, I think it's healthy. I think he I think he just yearns to to um, have a fresh start. You know, Florida that that coaching staff there is not the coaching staff that recruited him there at Florida. So it's a little bit different. You know, a little bit different offense. They want different things out of a quarterback. Sure. And, uh, so trying to find a new home where, you, where you're wanted, where your ta talents are valued, and I think that was really what it was about for him. And just a quick note from our sponsor today, Built Bar. There are so many new flavors at Built Bar right now, and with 150 calories, 15 grams of protein, and only 4 grams of sugar, Built Granola Bars will change your world. Built has cracked the code to better granola, their perfect healthy snack to pack in your lunch, take on the road, or eat as a sack. Maybe Carlos Del Rio Wilson's packing a couple of those to get some collagen protein in his body, and your body probably absorbs that a little bit more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Go to Built com use promo code locked 15 and get 15 percent off your order use promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off at built.com and to the listener we have an important favor to ask you we've put together a survey so we can learn more about our listeners like you and make your favorite locked on podcasts even better this is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about locked on podcasts go to locked on podcast.com slash survey right now to get started it won't take very long and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. Thanks for your help. We're here with Cartersville football coach Connor Foster talking about Carlos Del Rio Wilson and the new quarterback in the Salt City. Uh, and in the Salt City, I think that Carlos has a pretty bright future ahead. Garrett Schrader, of course, will be in this competition with him, but with Wilson or with Del Rio Wilson, excuse me, only being a freshman, he's got a long road. And even if he doesn't necessarily start this year, he could next year or the year after that uh, or the year after that. 
in terms of a player and what kind of numbers he can put up, what do you really think his ceiling can be in his four years left at SU? Yeah, I think he's got a really high ceiling. Um, you know, it starts with the arm talent, uh, you know, footwork in the pocket, some things that he's got to he's got to clean up, um, you know, from from our time here projecting to the next level. But um, I think a really, really high ceiling. I think he's got a great opportunity at, at a program there in the in the um, in the ACC that's got some some great opportunities out ahead of him as far as um, you know opportunity to move up within the conference um, and to really make some noise. Uh, it's a it's a program that I know that is longing. Uh, for some more Absolutely. glory years. Oh, um, you know it. <laughs> and so I think that, um, you know, I, I don't I don't think that everybody in the South appreciates the tradition there, but there's been so many, many big time players that have come out of Syracuse. And my hope is that Carlos is the next in line to a fan base that's just really, really hungry um, for, for the next big time player. And uh, so I'm excited for him, not not just, you know, from a, from a football opportunity, but an opportunity within a fan base, an opportunity within a community. Uh, to really, really be embraced for for kind of bringing the program back, um, you know, to the glory days. And as you alluded to a little bit, Syracuse, uh, the program in a, in a spot right now where they've gone 11 and 24 over the last three seasons. Of course, a lot of college football fans uh, might remember the one in 10 season that they put up in 2020, which kind of sticks in the minds of people who are thinking Syracuse football. Wow, uh, that's not too good. Uh, of course, Dino Babers, he won that Camping World Bowl back in 2018, but ever since has been a little bit lackluster. What do you think uh, a program like Syracuse that also has not really been too hot in terms of high-rated prospects on the recruiting trail, what do you think uh, it can act as for Carlos in terms of a trampoline to kind of bring the program up in that respect? Yeah, I think I think you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, great opportunity for him to have a ripple effect on the program, uh, not just in the quarterback room, but in the recruiting world to say, "Hey, this is a this is a place where elite athletes can can come and be developed and have the opportunity maybe to play early and compete early and compete on a big stage there, um, you know, in Power Five football and you know, and in a in a great college town and in a great college environment and um, a fan base that I think will really respond to some some positive seasons and. Um, again, great opportunity to go in there and, and compete in a conference that's not super top heavy. Um, you know, there's there's consistent um, you know, consistent programs, but um, you know, obviously an opportunity for Syracuse to improve there within the conference, and then you know to play on a big stage there um, in New York and, and and across the country. So I think it's an opportunity for him, and I think you'll see somebody that embraces that that wants to try to bring in more talent. Uh, that's got a great big personality. You'll see a big smile, an infectious personality. I think he's somebody that'll have, um, you know, like you said, a trampoline effect on recruiting as well. Yeah, Syracuse being the only Power Five program in the state of New York definitely does give it that uh, extra oomph in terms of of uh, a stage. Um, we talked about a lot of what Carlos is great at on the football field and what he is great at off the football field. What would you say is number one or two on your list in terms of things he should be working on or, or maybe uh, things you saw? Obviously, you said it's been a year since you've seen him. But what were the things that he needed to work on on the football field the most when you were coaching? Yeah, just tightening up his footwork, uh, being consistent there. Uh, sometimes when you've got really an elite arm and elite arm talent, uh, you know, some of those kind of details, um, you know, maybe there's not quite the same attention to, to detail where you footwork and and consistency and mechanics, but you know, starting there, making sure he's got a good foundation, making sure he's consistent there, and then you know, just continue to to improve upon the accuracy. And then the third thing, um, you know, is just just understanding situational football and understanding he's such a competitor. But sometimes, um, you know, sometimes it's okay to to um, you know to punt. You know, sometimes sometimes <laughs> it's all right to you know if, if a series ends in a kick, it's going to be okay. You know, give your defense a chance and. Um, you know, you love that competitive fire. You love the gunslinger mentality. But there's times, you know, when when we got to grind it out and punt the ball and, and win the game on defense. And, and I think he's, you know, I think you grew up in that capacity. I think you'll you'll see continued growth in that area. Well, a competitor is certainly something Syracuse fans want. Uh, so that's definitely good news coming from you. Uh, and just to reach back into that memory bag one more time, do you have a favorite memory on the football field of coaching Carlos in a game or, or practice or something like that? I um, mean, there's there's lots of lots of huge plays, lots of huge throws. Um, you know, I, I can think back in the quarterfinals um, against Ware County. 
we got down early, um, got down a few touchdowns in the first quarter, and you know, Carlos made a big run, which isn't necessarily always his thing, um, but had a huge run to get us get us back in the game. And that was that was probably my favorite. Some big throws down the stretch down there, and he's just a guy that as a game wears on, you feel like if we can if we can get him one more touch, if we can get him one more series, he's going to get a score and we're going to win a game. He just he just has that feel about him. Um, you know, we've had a lot of good quarterbacks here at Cartersville. Um, with Trevor Lawrence and T. Webb and uh, Carlos, and there's there's just been so many over the years. And Carlos has, has certainly left his own legacy here. And like I said, he's he's a guy that you want to get one more touch. He's a guy you feel like if we can stay close in the fourth quarter, he's going to will us to a victory. And he did that several times throughout the senior year here at Cartersville. And a question that kind of piggybacks off of that one: When was your moment of wow? This guy's really good. Uh, uh, what was the first time that you said that, I guess? Yeah, so um, the, the first time we got out there and he was spinning it, um, you know you, you know that the arm talent's on par with some of the ones that we've, we've had. And, um, you know, I, and, and I knew com- coming into it, you've heard about his arm strength. I, I, think, I think the first practice um, when, when he was willing to come in and um, maybe not be the guy right away and, and have to serve his teammates and – uh, be willing to jump in and, and kind of work in a, in a scout role capacity and, um, you know, to, to serve the defense and to do some different things. That's when you knew, really, this guy's ceiling uh, is super high, not just because of the arm talent, but because he's got the it factor as well. And you mentioned some of the other names that have come through Cartersville, notably Trevor Lawrence. Are there any attributes or factors that overlap between Trevor uh, and Carlos? The competitiveness. Uh, all, all your really, really elite players, um, it's different. You know, it's just it's a different kind of fire. Um, it's a different kind of grit. Um, it's a different kind of confidence that those kids carry themselves with. And uh, he's got it. He's, he's got that part of the game. Um, it, it's fun. It's infectious. It makes everybody around him better. Gotcha. Well, Connor Foster, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Good luck this season. Thank you. Thanks for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. Rafael Barlow, Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin give fans an in-depth look into the biggest prospects, the latest player rankings, and of course, Big Boards. Follow Locked On NBA Big Board every day on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Tomorrow I will be back with Brad Klein, or maybe Monday. Uh, We'll have to see about that one, but hopefully we'll have some more Syracuse football recruiting news for you and possibly some more Carlos Del Rio Wilson content. I'll see you then.